Good evening. I'm Jean Kwan. I'm the Vice Mayor of Oakland. I've been leading grassroots work and organizing the city for the last 20 years. And the issue of transportation and housing um, and just climate change in general has been more and more something that's done at the bottom level from the Kyoto Accords. Um, the state legislation is tied up with lobbyists. The federal Congress is totally, totally uh, bought off by the lobbyists. So it's very, very difficult. Most of the change that's happened has been initiated here on the grassroots. As a grassroots leader, um, I've worked with ABAG to, and as the ABAG is the Association of Bay Area Governments, we do the housing numbers, we do the projections, and we we're able to build a compromise with our suburban and rural brothers and sisters around the Bay to say if cities like Oakland should take more housing because of global warming, it's what we call smart growth, put the housing where public transportation is, then we should get more of the funding. And we were able to define priority zones so that more funding will come to Oakland transit villages around bar more funding will come along our major corridors. Um, what we have to do going forward is to look at the issue of impact fees because inclusionary zoning, that is our ability to get developers to put a percentage aside for affordable housing, has been hurt in recent court decisions. But we can put a fee on all new construction so that we can fund workforce housing and use a higher percentage of our redevelopment funds for those. Those are concrete things that we can do. In addition, as a mayor, you fight on regional boards to make sure both at the federal and the state level that more of our dollar, right now less than 20% of our dollar, goes to public transportation. We need to have a fairer share for urban people. And if, when Prop A comes, the, the transportation tax for the county, we need to make sure more goes to AC Transit, more goes to paratransit for seniors, and more goes to free bus passes for students. Thank you. But the first thing we have to make sure is that PGD doesn't try to close the door on this. They made a very hard political push about two years ago to get the Oakland City Council to agree not to go ahead with community choice aggregation. And they're backing the candidate who's not here. Um, <laughs> we we um, have ability, I think, to create jobs in three ways. One is we're going to get a lot of the green jo jobs in terms of weatherization, et, et cetera. And um, we need to make sure that the local choice provisions of that really happen. And we're going to really have to monitor that carefully because the loans will go out to individuals. But we need to make sure that we, we, we make sure that low income people get them as well as middle class people. And we need to make sure that the companies that do well here are those that hire local people. Secondly, we need to take the public capital that we do have, and I was the chair of StopWaste.org, and we invested in some innovative, different kinds of alternative energy plants. We helped fund a second digester that takes the bat that Rebecca was talking about um, in restaurants and other places and turns it in to um, reusable gases and, and, and at the same time processes the sewage. We also can have little mini versions of it. So personally, I want to defend a couple of the uh, dairy farm ones from Germany where you take the cow manure and you, you capture the, the greenhouse gases and you develop methane gas that you can sell. Um, there's a small entrepreneur that wants to do a small digester and, and link it to a bakery so that it can provide heat. Thirdly, we have to change the rules to make sure that PG&E doesn't, sometimes they block the ability to sell back the energy back into the grid. We can capitalize and make our, our housing rules much easier so that we can do green roofs, that we can do more solar roofs, and make sure that people have the ability to sell that energy back into the grid um, and, and create our own energy. And lastly, we just Joe can buy Tumen. alternative energy like Alameda does. Their energy is actually, bills are less than ours. One of the basic issues in Oakland is just the access to food. Um, there are parts of the city in West Oakland and East Oakland where there's not a decent grocery store. There are many of our seniors who can't get to a store. Um, if they're lucky, they get a voucher, maybe from the city once or twice a month. So decentralizing access to food is pretty critical. So some of the issues that Rebecca was talking about in zoning, allowing pop-up farmers markets, allowing more exchanges, using libraries, gardens as schools, um, as places where some of those exchanges can happen. I've been helping a group of Bhutanese, if you've seen that nice article in the Tribune about this new community, 
find a community garden. If you've been to a Prata Hacienda, it's actually a solution that it's helpful because we cut half of our, our park maintenance staff actually turning over large tracts of our, our community parks to community gardens is sort of a win-win solution. So we need we can do that within um, the city resources. We also need to, um, as, as the chair again of Southways, we have this bay-friendly garden, and one of the major principles we're talking about is integrating food into a garden. And that's sort of how I grew up. My mother grew vegetables among the roses, and we, we have to change the way we look at gardens, we gotta get rid of those lawns, and that's sort of an education long-term thing. But the major thing is the equity and the green lining. We need to use our economic force to force grocery stores not to green line East Oakland and West Oakland so people can have at least basic grocery stores, we need also, I think, to um, change some of the rules. And so some of the, the zoning rules include the gray water issues, but also how we zone for vendors and pop-up uh, uh, supermarkets and that's part of the food policy, too, not supermarkets, but, but farmers markets. And lastly, we need to um, use uh, our transit dollars, our policy to provide transportation to people so they can get to stores and we need to force neighborhood convenience stores to have more food and not just um, soda and chips. Some of you know I'm the chair of the Chabot Space and Science Center, so I hang around with guys who say, Al Gore was wrong, it's gonna be happen twice as fast. And so we're about to open an amazing exhibit um, started by Bill Nye from PBS. It's called Bill Nye's Science Climate Lab. And we're hoping to bring thousands of Oakland kids through and then we're gonna have, their, our plot is to have them then change their parents because they're each gonna get a card where they can count how they've saved the planet every day. So I think that a lot of this is what your group, particularly Ella Baker, has done such a good job is when the last time I met with you, you were at Laney College and you had all of these report outs from different communities Particularly, I was most impressed by the immigrant communities. So we need to make sure that the education about global warming and climate change reaches everybody. And, and that's very important for equity. Concretely, um, we as a city need to bump up our urban forestation plan. I've given the Sierra Club a lot of money for planting trees. We need to do it on a, a much, much larger scale because that's part of affecting climate change. Um, in another question, I don't know if you're going to ask it next, um, the LA uh, port plan has just uh, won a port victory. So we need to uh, bring a lot of our, our uh, greenhouse gases come from the port. We need to implement that plan very quickly uh, to put a container charge on so that we can do mitigations, that we can uh, retrofit to trips, the to trucks and make the, the shipping companies responsible for the greenhouse impact on the community. Um, we need to use some of that money, I think, to retrofit homes and, and improve their ventilation because of the lead particulates and, and the impact of asthma on immigrant kids and poor kids all along the 880 corridor. Um, lastly, I think we need to make sure that we have funding for green uh, retrofits within homes um, to help low-income families, um, and that we need to make sure that we use our federal dollars to, to do that, and that will make it more equitable and safer for people in low-income housing. Well, some of you were at the eBay store, and we spent a lot of time on this, and the, um, the drivers have educated us very well. Um, as I said earlier, the LA has recently won its, its court case, and um, I think Oakland, the next mayor of Oakland, needs to move forward very, very quickly. Um, so we need to implement the container fee. Um, we need to use those funds to environmentally clean up the whole process in the greenhouses. I would extend it, as I said, to also try to match that with federal grants to retrofit homes, um, particularly to purify the air for families that live along the 880 corridor, um, and not just around the port in West Oakland, but if you see the little, um, I used to be health educator, if you see the clusters are all along wherever the freeway and the wind patterns are. I think that the next mayor and how you can hold us accountable is to make sure we, we, we appoint good port commissioners. I see Margaret Gordner is here who, who have an understanding of the needs of the community and will be balanced on that. And in terms of whether you can trust me, you know, I've been a grassroots organizer for 20 years. Um, one thing, you may not always agree with me, but I show up. So you'll be able to be in my face, you'll be able to talk to me. Um, I don't walk precincts just when I'm running for office. I walk precincts to organize communities, to try to organize communities, to help them fight for their rights, to fight for their schools, 
all the time. I have a long record of delivering, I have a long record of keeping my promises, and the reason I can is because I don't say I'm gonna do it my, myself, I do it in partnership with communities, that's why our campaign theme was organizing Oakland block by block, and we believe that we can, in a community movement, make changes that the city just alone can't afford money-wise. So, so what would that mean concretely? It does mean planting those green trees. It does mean educating families to make sure that they, they retrofit their homes. It does mean organizing them to fight for their rights and if we don't do our duty to, to fight and elect our replacements. Thank you. First of all, um, the, Oak, the city of Oakland has a lot of commissions. Unfortunately, a lot of them aren't well staffed. And so the question is, should we have one commission for this, or maybe should we have a commission that um, takes up several of the green issues? We also have a, uh, a zero waste commission or grouping. We also have a task force on um, peak oil. We have a lot of other initiatives that are very closely tied. So if we do do a new commission, it would probably have to take the breadth of those, those issues. But I think, but the goals here are two things. Is one, that you want to make sure that the city government's paying attention that, that we're integrating these different strategies so we have a more sustainable and a greener Oakland. And so one of the things I'd like to see is make sure that the mayor hosts the collaboration of these to look at the targets. And I think that the targets that you have recommended, um, I like them too, because I like to be able to measure things. I'd like to know how many truck miles are being uh, used or how many greenhouse gas um, emissions are there. And that's, Oakland was one of the early joiners of ICLEI, which um, is looking at climate change and measures those and tries to keep um, uh, all the cities that are participating um, on track to reducing greenhouse emissions. So I think that a report card um, that this collaboration puts out and monitors is, is critical. But for the issue of jobs, it's going to probably take something more like a special unit within the city that looks at contract compliance because how we're going to get immigrants and how we're going to get people who are coming out of prisons jobs is really make sure that the set-asides that we have for local Oaklanders get enforced. And unless we have a collaboration with the job training programs that feed them into the unions and then feed them into these jobs and then make the subcontractors of the port uh, participate, um, unless you have a division that does that and dogs that, it won't happen. 